Hey, this is Steven from Wild Stuff. Welcome to the show. This video is my review of the E35 version 3, a super compact everyday carry flashlight from Phoenix with 3000 lumens and a wide flood beam. I'll give you a tour of the light and its main features, do some side by side comparisons with some other popular Phoenix models, and then take it outside and shine it around a bit. For those new to my channel, my flashlight reviews are not overly technical. I'm more interested in the design, build and real life impressions of a flashlight and how it compares to other lights, rather than what kind of LED chipset it has or what colour temperature it is. I won't be pouring through the full list of technical specifications, and I use terms such as warm, hot and ouchy rather than going into three decimal places of thermal detail. And a big thank you to Phoenix for sending me this light for review. Now I always knew that this was going to be a compact light, but reading measurements on a screen just doesn't do it justice. It wasn't until I got to actually hold it in my hand that I could fully appreciate how tiny it really was, despite it also packing 3000 lumens and a full size 21700 battery. The battery comes included with the light, and is a Phoenix branded 5000 mAh 21700 battery with a built in USB-C charging port. I love this design, as it means there are no external charging ports on the flashlight to get dirty or damaged, no rubber flaps that get old and rotten, and if you do somehow manage to damage the battery's charging port, all you need to do is replace the battery. The E35 version 3 has no rear tail switch, and is controlled completely through the single side switch. Unfortunately this means there's no momentary on function, however it does tail stand very well. At the front end is a simple circular bezel and a small reflector cone. On the side is a removable one-way pocket clip, and also included is a small wrist lanyard. The E35 version 3 is controlled entirely by a single side switch near the front of the light. Operation is fairly straightforward, a long push to turn it on, then quick taps to toggle through the five settings of eco, low, medium, high and turbo and another long push to turn it off again. There is no mode memory, so it will always turn on into the lowest setting. As you can see here when I switch it off from turbo, it comes back on in eco mode. Strobe is accessed by pushing and holding the button, and this works regardless of whether the light is on or off. There doesn't seem to be a way to lock strobe on, it just continues as long as you keep holding the button. In the centre of the button you'll find a very useful battery indicator light, which briefly lights up when the button is pushed. It starts showing solid green, then progresses to flashing green, then solid red, then flashing red, as your battery depletes. The E35 version 3 also has a secure lockout mode to prevent it accidentally turning on in your bag, and in case you forget how, the instructions are printed right there above the button. A quick double tap will lock the light, and any further attempts to turn it on will just receive a double flash to remind you it's locked. Another quick double tap will unlock it again back to normal. As I said before, this is a tiny light and has no issue fitting very comfortably in a side trouser pocket alongside a wallet. It's ideal for everyday carry. Use it with a pocket clip, or make it disappear entirely if you prefer. Phoenix also claimed that the E35 version 3 has an IP68 rating, being drop proof to 1.5 meters and submersible to 2 meters for about half an hour, so accidentally dropping it in the pool doesn't bother me. The E35 version 3 comes in a frustratingly difficult to open blister bubble package. Here's what you'll find inside. The light itself, shown here with a lanyard and pocket clip already attached. A Phoenix 5000 mAh 21700 battery with a built-in USB-C charging port. A small USB-C charging cable. A couple of spare rubber O-rings. And the usual paperwork and warranty information. It's worth noting that there's no belt pouch included, but that doesn't bother me. The E35 version 3 sells for $102.95 in Australian dollars from Phoenix Australia, or $74.95 in US dollars from the American distributors. So I did my usual super scientific test where I time how long I can hold the front end of the light in turbo mode before it becomes too painful. Note that I'm not blocking the beam itself, I'm just holding the barrel of the body. 
Being such a physically small light with so many lumens is of course a disadvantage. By 20 to 30 seconds in, it was already pretty hot and toasty, and it was burning hot and painful by about 50 seconds. <sighs> After giving it plenty of time to cool down, I filmed it sitting on the table in turbo mode to see if and when it would downshift to the next mode. Instead of a sudden drop like I was expecting, I found a very smooth and gradual downshift between approximately 50 seconds and a minute 20. It was so gradual that it wasn't noticeable to the naked eye, and I only found it by comparing video frames. Following that, it held a stable output for the remainder of the 5 minutes I filmed it for. So to give you an idea of its physical size and appearance compared to some other current Phoenix models, here it is firstly with the LD30. The LD30 is even more pocket friendly, with 1600 lumens and a smaller 18650 battery. It's noticeably shorter and narrower, and has a rear tail switch and a two-way pocket clip. Next up is the PD35 version 3. It's noticeably longer, but slimmer, with 1700 lumens and an 18650 battery. And finally, the PD36R, which is noticeably longer, but has about the same diameter, due to using the same kind of battery. I've got a blank white wall here, about 7 feet away from the camera, which I can use to give you an idea of beam patterns. You can see here the E35 version 3 has a very large, wide hotspot without a defined edge, and has loads of side spill, resulting in a big flood beam. Next I'll include the LD30 on the right. It's still a very floody kind of light, but its hotspot is slightly smaller and more clearly defined than the E35 and it appears to be doing an impressive job here against the E35, given the stated difference in lumens and candela. The E35's beam also appears to have a slightly green tinge compared to the lighter white of the other models in these comparisons. Next is the PD35 version 3, which has a much tighter narrower beam, obviously a thrower rather than a flutter. Its side spill is virtually non-existent compared to the E35, but it has that super intense hotspot with the most throw I've ever seen from a light this size. And now the PD36R, which kind of sits in between being a thrower or a flutter. It has a smaller but more intense hotspot, and a decent amount of side spill, but still not as wide as the E35. So let's go light up some trees. The larger tree line at the back is about 50 metres or 165 feet from where I'm standing at the bottom of the frame. The E35 version 3 has no problems reaching them, but doesn't light them up very much at this distance, and the hotspot is no longer discernible from the side spill. You can see it doing a much better job of lighting up the ground in front of me. Now I'll add the LD30 for comparison. To me they seem to do a similar job of lighting the trees at the back, and the hotspot is noticeably narrower when I pointed at the grass in front of the trees. Next I'll add the PD35 version 3. This is a great example of the difference between a floodlight and a spotlight, with the E35's wide soft beam, and the PD35's tight narrow spot beam, with very little side spill. And finally the PD36R, sitting somewhere in between being a flood beam and a spot beam. So, the things I like about it. Firstly, it's tiny. I'm quite impressed that Phoenix managed to squeeze 3000 lumens into something this small. It tucks away neatly in your pocket, and is ideal for everyday carry. I thought the PD35 version 3 was small, while the E35 is even smaller. It has a very wide, soft flood beam, though this might not be to everyone's tastes, even myself I prefer a more pronounced hotspot and a longer throw for my adventures, but the wide flood beam has its uses perhaps more for indoor or urban environments, where a long throwing distance would be wasted, or walking along a path at night, where you might like a bit of light in your peripheral vision too. 
It's great for tail standing. I don't see that on many lights nowadays, but it's a feature I do use occasionally, and I'd like to see it more often. It can be charged via USB-C directly to the battery. There's no proprietary dongles or adapters needed, and no external charging ports or rubber flaps to worry about getting damaged over time. And if you do somehow manage to damage the charging port, then you simply replace the battery. It has a simple and intuitive user interface, all very straightforward via a single button, with no complicated sequences of button pushing to access certain features. And the lockout mode instructions are written clearly on the side of the light, so anyone could pick this light up and use it without needing to read the manual first. The lockout mode is a super handy feature, which could save burning a hole in your bag or pocket. The downshift from turbo to high when the light gets too hot is smooth and gradual rather than a sudden drop and is barely noticeable to the naked eye. It performs reasonably well throughout most of the battery life. As I worked my way through a charge cycle, all modes continued functioning correctly well after the indicator light began showing a solid red, which is around 50% battery. Turbo began to function only intermittently as I pushed on further with the solid red and was no longer accessible at all by the time the red light began to flash, at around 25% charge. And the one main drawback to the E35 version 3. It gets very hot very quickly. This is inevitable when you jam 3000 lumens into a torch this size. The E35 version 3 becomes painfully hot to hold after just 50 seconds in turbo mode, so you'll only be able to use the full 3000 lumens for short bursts. If you're planning a 20 minute stroll up a dark forest path, then you'll be needing to drop back down to one of the lower settings. So is this the light for you? If you like a spotlight with a long throwing distance and a tight narrow beam, then I'll stop you here, this light isn't for you. Other models such as the PD35 version 3 or any of the newer TK series are probably what you're looking for. However, if you're looking for a wide flood beam in a tiny package that you can tuck away in your pocket or bag and forget about it, then this should be at the top of your list. Pound for pound, this is probably Phoenix's most powerful light, and is perfect for evening strolls, forest pathways, dark corridors and alleyways. Just make sure you also check out the LD30, as it's even more compact and doesn't get quite so hot as quickly. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more reviews and adventures.